Tonight, the Mets go down to Atlanta for a three-game series, possibly the biggest series yet this season. The Mets' lead in the National League East has now trimmed down to one and a half games, and this series has become a must-win. Now, over the past few years, the Braves have definitely had the Mets' number, and if you want to avoid the low Mets narrative, this is the way to do it. It's either you win now or win never. So today, we're here to break down how the Mets can get over that hump. We've got five keys to the Mets taking out the Braves. On three and two, Vader swings and misses strike three. He struck it out. Five big pitchers combined for the second no hitter in New York Mets history. Now, the Mets do come into this series with a few disadvantages. Jeff McNeil will be going on paternity leave and has not traveled to Atlanta with this team. He will not be playing the entire series. We also have Starling Marte, who is a bit questionable on day-to-day with some groin tightness that he suffered in last series against the Marlins. Now, the Mets offense has been struggling a little bit as of recent, and that definitely is not any help. And you're going up against Atlanta's best three pitchers, starting-wise, to your division rival without your two two of your best bats against their three best starters. Offense isn't hitting with risk. So this, is, this screams like disaster. But knowing this team... So let's get into the five keys to beating the Braves. Now, number one is simply designed behind one player who has been on fire. That is containing Michael Harris. Now, Harris has been pretty much a surprise since being called up. In his rookie year, he is slashing 300, 331, 520 with a 134 WRC plus in his rookie season. Now, the key to getting out Michael Harris, he loves to swing. He is ninth in the major leagues in swing rate. And the top component of that is pretty much every rookie's Achilles heel the breaking ball. He's got a 276 WOBA against that, along with a 34.6% whiff rate. And that's pretty much been shown in his batted ball peripherals with a 54.8% ground ball rate. So inducing soft contact is the main way to get this guy out. He's been a pain in the ass ever since Braves were struggling. They were dead in the water. They weren't hitting. Was he ready? Probably not. But guess what? The Braves still did it. And they said, you know what? We're struggling. We need some kind of offensive spark. And they called this kid up. And he has been that guy. You know, he is that guy, at least early in his career. Like I said, he's he's fastball. So keep the fastball in the back pocket against this guy. Because he's looking up there, going, looking dead red, trying to hit a fastball out of the ballpark. If his, if his weakness is to keep throwing some off speed, throw the breaking ball, throw the slider. You know, Max is going to be trying to work the cutter against him. Lefty, have him beat you. With secondary pitches rather than the fastball, I think that could be a recipe for his success. But there is another guy in the lineup, which we'll get to a little bit later, who has been a notorious Met killer who is raging as we speak. The main thing about this is that Michael Harris is mainly doing this from the nine hole. And when you look at the nine hole in our lineup, it's usually our catching position, which has pretty much been hitting at the level of what a starting pitcher would hit as when you did not have the universal DH. Definitely a more deep lineup that you're seeing with Atlanta. So you definitely have to watch out with that. It's definitely nine very difficult outs throughout that entire lineup. And that brings us to number two, which is pitching around the strike zone. Now, just like Michael Harris, this entire team loves to swing. They are bottom five in walk rate and seven in team chase rate. They also have a 62.5% put away rate against non-fastballs. Now, listen, I'm not that big of a fan about pitching around the strike zone. We all know this, say no to walks, but challenging the strike zone at a mass rate definitely is a tough task against this team. And that's why I really think that David Peterson might do great in this because, you know, half the time he can't even get the ball over the plate. So um, bait these hitters. Don't attack the zone as much. Problem for a guy like Max Scherzer, who just wants to constantly just pound the strike zone. And I think obviously he is the ace right now and we need to win the game tonight with him on the mound. But I could see him struggling, like you said, because he's a guy that likes to throw first pitch strikes, first ball, fastball type guy. And obviously, would he be able to get over his secondary pitches? And that's going to be the main key tonight, at least with Scherz on the mound. You could use that to your advantage, really, in the Mets perspective to say, hey, if they're going to go up there swinging i'm not gonna throw like you said anything close to the zone make themselves get out maybe if they're trying to chase maybe it lowers pitch counts for these guys so maybe if they're pitching to contact which may isn't the greatest idea to do against this team because obviously they like to hit the ball in the ballpark and they do that but maybe pitching into contact and get these the starters deeper into the game if they can get the first pitch strike because obviously travis star no i think is leading in that team like he's always swinging first pitch so that's going to be a big key against for travis who always seems to kill the mets but if maybe this these couple games can maybe starters can get deeper work to that benefit of them chasing early in the count.
Of course, we always have the exception with Max Scherzer. You just got to let Max be Max. You let him have what, as long of a leash as he can, and he's going to get the job done multiple times. You know that if he's not injured, he's going to push to seven. And that's basically what you can count on with Max Scherzer. As for the rest of the rotation, it is going to be interesting how they approach this because most of them can be a little bit more fastball heavy. But hopefully those adjustments are going to be made. That this team definitely has a weakness when you do keep the ball onto the ground. Now that brings us to number three, which is more of an offensive key, set the table. One of the Mets' biggest strengths this year, especially in this lineup, is table setting. Now, even though the power protection has been a problem, the Mets are third in the MLB in on-base percentage. Now, Brandon Nimmo, Mark Canna, Luis Guillorme, they're all going to be huge factors in this series, especially with Jeff McNeil out and Marte being currently questionable. It's going to be up to the table setters to fight their way on base. Now, why is this important? We've done this all season. Well, the Braves are the fourth worst pitching staff in the MLB with runners on, they have left only 69.6% of base runners on. That is way below the league average of 72.6%. Now, the main goal here from the offensive standpoint is to make them work from the stretch as much as you can throughout all nine innings. They were saying, hey, you know, the Mets were great with Chris in the last two weeks have struggled. So maybe the Braves could be the medicine the Mets need to wake the hell back up. Marte and McNeil, obviously two guys who always get on, they'll hit their way. But you have the ability of, hey, maybe this stretch, maybe some better pitches for Pete to drive. You're starting, maybe this could wake this offense back up. And like I said, it's going to be tough because they are starting wise. Well, we said, you're going to get their best attack early and being beat up on the starters with guys in scoring position. Just see green and then, you know, start to see them, them hits with run in scoring position and get back on the roll that they were. And that brings us to number four. As you set the table, that makes you play through the polar bear. Now, I have said this all year long. If this offense wants to succeed, Pete Alonso has to be the main source of offense. He currently leads the league in runs batted in, but he has hit a bit of a rough stretch recently. Since July began, Alonso is just nine for his last 42, slashing just 225, 262, 350 with a 77 WRC+. Now, with Alonso being that main source of offense, this has pushed the Mets' entire lineup going down to 24th overall so far in offense in the month of July. But this is an easy way to turn it around because Alonzo does love hitting in Atlanta. He's slashing 275, 398, 488 with a 133 WRC plus at Truist Park. It's on Pete's shoulders to be the main source of offense as it's been all year, but it's also on the rest of the lineup to set the table for. Notice has been correlating with Pete Alonzo struggling. You know, obviously Pete in July, Beginning of July has just not been himself like he was in the first half of the season. He loves hitting that ball. For, he loves that little, I don't know if it's a pool or a fountain in center field. He loves hitting balls up there. See if that power can come back. And obviously, he's got to get the power going. He's at the Derby next week. So, you know, he's got to put on a show right before he has to put on another show on Monday. And obviously, being announced as an all-star, maybe that's the jolt of the summer now. Seeing it finally be official. We need the polar bear to get hot. We need to start murdering seals like he was before. Now, like the seals are kicking his ass. So, you know, he'd like to see the polar bear wake the hell up. He's the number one factor. He needs to hit and then everybody else around him will hit. Obviously, we want a little bit more power protection going towards the trade deadline, but that's another story. But for now, what you're working with, Pete Alonso has to be that main source, especially with guys like Marte and McNeil, most likely not going to be in the lineup for this entire series. Marte obviously being questionable. Now we get to number five, which I believe is the most important part. It's not how you start. It is how you finish. You have to win the battle of the bullpens. Although it has been a back and forth roller coaster for the Mets bullpen this season, Atlanta has also suffered the same fate. They've had loads of injuries. They have had inconsistencies throughout the back end. How do the Mets win this battle? It's pretty much simple. Build the bridge to Edwin Diaz. Edwin Diaz has been one of the best relievers in all of baseball, if not the best, just being named an all-star yesterday. And he has been nothing but dominant, striking out more than 50% of batters this season. Get to Edwin Diaz. That is the number one key. So the Braves are missing Kenley Jansen, so the Mets you know, get a little break. That they're missing Kenley. Colin McHugh's faltered lately, so he hasn't been the same. As we can still have a pretty good overall season, but not to what he was uh, paid last year with Tampa Bay. They have a ton of left. 
lefties, which, you know, uh, Mets historically, like we know, suck against lefties. They have four in their bullpen, including they just got back Tyler Matzik, I believe, on Sunday. He was, again, the Mets have to get to Diaz. And notice, like like we said, talking about the first point, maybe with the Braves being aggressive early in counts, if Scherzer and Bassett, you know, David Peterson to an extent, I'm not putting that much trust in a David Peterson. But the other two guys, if they can use that to their advantage and get deep into the games, maybe go seven. Mad Max's case, maybe go eight. And then you're just handing the ball straight from Max to Diaz. They, they got to get the starter out and get into that bullpen early. But that's easier said than done, especially against the Braves. But if the Mets want to win this series, and this is a statement series for the Mets, get into that bullpen early and often and then take advantage there. Now, overall, you look at all these five keys. In my opinion, it all comes down to one thing. You can't outslug them but you can outsmart them. And that's pretty much what I'm looking at here. You obviously have the breaking pitches, which is something that Michael Harris cannot really hit. You've also looked at this team that loves to swing, so you can definitely bait them without attacking the strike zone a majority of the time. And then, of course, the offense has to be designed how it was designed in the offseason. And of course, the bullpen, they've had their inconsistencies. We've had our inconsistencies, but we definitely have that one piece of advantage and that is Edwin Diaz to close it out. This isn't the Marlins. Like this, They're going to score, like you said. They're going to try to hit the ball out of the ballpark. That's how they score runs. They're not like us. We got to get back to that small ball, you know, way that we were in the first couple months. You just got to keep, you know, grinding, beat shift, beaters, do everything you possibly can. Travis Darno is most likely behind the plate. So, obviously, we're not going to have Sonny Marte. But start sending the runners. Start hit and run. Get back to buck ball. That's the main thing. You're not going to outslug them. So you got to outslug. That's what I said. You got to outsmart them. Play your style of baseball. Our style is better than their style. Maybe after the all-star break, you add a little bit of their style with the you know, maybe we'll add a couple of bats to the deadline, but for me, just keep it simple. Take advantage of the opportunities you do get them. This has been the main focus of their offense. Just basically make them as uncomfortable as you can. Work counts, grind them out. It's not a one, two, three, done. Don't be constantly swinging for the fences because you know you don't have that power advantage. At the end of the day, it's just outsmarting them. It's just playing a better game than them. As an offense, do what this offense was designed to do and be an absolute nuisance. It, and it's so bad that we'll, even if we get swept, oh God, it feels so terrible. We're out of the playoff. Oh wait, we go into the number one wild card spot. I'm I'm not happy with that. I'm sorry. Okay, playoffs. I, I'm good. I'm going 162 and 0. I don't care. One thing I really want. I'm looking forward to is I really do want there to be a fight between the Mets and the Braves so somebody can wake up and somebody can get pumped up. I mean, who are your main candidates to fight on this team? Who do you want to get knocked out? What I've always said is I want Max to just break everyone's hands on the Braves, just pitch inside and accidentally hit Riley, Swanson, and Olsen on the head. Forget all these keys that we just brought out. Just beat them with violence. That's it. Facts. Just Piss the polar bear off. Yeah, violence, I believe, is the answer, but walks are not. Remember to say no to walks. F exactly. F the Braves. <laughs>